So now I'd like to uh, introduce our next speaker, Alex Blood, and she's Executive Director of our very own Mineral Resources Division within the Department for Energy and Mining. Alex was at the helm when the Accelerated Discovery Initiative was announced earlier this year, and she'll share more on this initiative with us now. Please welcome Alex. Thank you and good afternoon. I think uh, this is the perfect wind up to the three different um, stories that you've heard, the, the open data, the alignment, the AI, which is not constrained, it's just find a problem and see if it can help. And then Holly is the in-between, as the geologist who's also in that space. And then along comes the Accelerated Discovery Initiative. So I thought what I'd do is the what, the why, and the how of this. Some of you may be aware of it, some, some may not. So this is a new three-year, $10 million uh, government co-funding program designed to support the exploration sector. The program, its nickname is the ADI, so if I dip into TLCs, three-letter acronyms, that's what I'm talking about. This will be administered by the Mineral Resources Team in the Department for Energy and Mining, and it's currently funded to run through to 2022. So a little bit of the why of the ADI. So the current government is setting itself um, a positive and ambitious target of trying to move the state to an annual 3% growth target, a sustainable 3%, not a, not a temporary peak and flow. As part of that, they've put out um, the challenge to each of the government departments, including ourselves, to try to set what is the strategy that will help move, move the dial to support this economic growth. And it's been very clear uh, through the analysis done on this that the mineral sector, which accounts for at the moment at least 8% of the state's annual um, gross state product, also 44% of the state's exports and employs over 40,000 people, is a real uh, heavy lifter in terms of trying to achieve some of these goals. Some of you may or may not have provided comments, but we as the Department for Energy and Mining, that's our consultation paper. That's been open for public comment, either in face-to-face -face interviews, formal written submissions, the on online Your Say website for the last couple of months. Our job as the department now is to take all those comments to reflect on what government is trying to achieve and the thinking that they've put in, and then come up with a final um, vision to move towards this 3%. Yes, it will be optimistic. Yes, it will, be, uh, it will need to be fresh. And yes, it, ta it touches all the different components of energy and mining, not just the word mining or the word exploration, but all the bits in between that, um, that fuel these. The other graph I thought I would show, which is the other half of the why, is the exploration trends. So the beautiful spike in the middle, that's where we want to be. But that's actually the mid-2000s, and you can sort of see over time that that's actually gone in the wrong direction. We don't like that type of graph. We like that type of graph. And whilst we've had some really good turnaround, it's actually been very positive. We've had a 10-year high in um, exploration expenditure uh, this year, but we've got a long way to go till we hit those um, mid-2000 type of levels. And it's clear that even with positive improvements, any of you that's a junior explorer knows that the investment market is still very fickle. It still can be a challenge, and therefore money to actually do... Um, the heavy lifting that leads to discovery can be a challenge. And I will say, uh, in South Australia, you know, jurisdictions can be very different in their mix, but if you think about the exploration sector and the junior exploration sector in particular, they really are the heavy lifters and the foundation of mineral discovery in this state. So, if you acknowledge the importance of discovery, if we want to drive economic growth and we want the minerals component of energy and mining to contribute to that in the way that it can, we need discovery. If we want discovery, we need explorers. If we want explorers, we need to be able to support them in the challenges that they face, not just technically, but also financially. And that's the only way that we're going to move forward. So that's kind of the why of the ADI. And yes, I did practice making that rhyme. So just a reminder as to why do we actually care in South Australia? Well, we've actually got a lot to offer. This is just a quick, quick reminder. All this mineral wealth is still out there to be found. Um, these are in-demand commodities. These are the commodities needed to drive the gig economy. 
those needed to support technology, to drive new energy solutions, to drive cleaner steel production, if you follow the magnetite story in China, and even to sustain global ceramics and fiber optics, which is how you get the bandwidth to do all these wonderful things in, in a gig economy anyway. And so, what? What is the ADI? So the scope of the ADI is now the most contemporary co-funding government program in the country. Uh, the scope has changed. It's evolved very much from the PACE co-funding days um, that South Australia had when it was a leader then. And it's reflecting, I guess, the changing opportunities and the changing drivers um, in the mineral and mineral discovery sector, but also the changing demands from a community perspective. So what I'll do is I'll just run through what the scope is. So, of course, um, there is scope for funding from single and down and multiple drilling programs. But we also want to make available and recognise we live in a vast, a remote and a very physically challenging state. There are vast areas of our state that are underexplored and we, you know, we're pretty sure there's something cool out there that we quite like to dig up to build things with. Um, so recognising that and our own experience with the work that the Geological Survey did in the far west in the Kumpana drilling program, the support for that logistical frontier, like true frontier type exploration is now included in scope. The other thing that is included now is of course leading on from Ursula, from um, Machine Institute, from Unearthed, is this collaborative innovation and technologies um, idea data, downhole sensors, laser, the coiled, um, the coiled tubing drilling rig that is outside, they are all examples of rapidly evolving and expanding opportunities for new ways to collect, to transfer, or even interrogate um, information either during, before, or after drilling. And in the case of that um, uh, drill rig, which I'm a particularly a big fan of, um, even a new way to drill and, and it shouldn't be forgotten that the mining, engineering and tech sector, which we call METS as, a, as another TLC, um, is currently worth over $15 billion in exports from Australia. And the predictions on the growth of that to fuel other high tech is, is yet untapped. Uh, and it would be a great shame to see this state miss out on that. Geophysics is in the program. You heard um, Stefan Thiel and Adrian Fabrice talk today, and it's very clear listening to them that the contribution that geophysics and other survey techniques is now offering to exploration is material and is an opportunity to accelerate mineral discovery. And then I guess the last two are really reflecting the changing challenges that we have of our time. One is uh, groundwater. Um, mines need it, mines are constrained by it, but so do our remote um, communities and it was only in the last three weeks you saw that there's a remote Aboriginal community out in Far West that has no water, they're out. So groundwater and the ability for groundwater and groundwater data to be publicly available is material to the long-term survival, I think, of everybody in an environment that's becoming increasingly constrained uh, to access water resources. And the other part of this is um, traditional owners. You know, um, the Aboriginal community are traditional custodians of this country. They are a key part of most remote communities. They have a key stakeholder interest that is unique compared to everybody else. And the opportunity that ADI will offer is to help co-fund um, training and employment during exploration, whether it's the traditional drilling or in the innovation and the tech side, um, because increasing their participation in the workforce is good for them as, as communities. It's good for our sector to to support those and it also helps remote communities stay on country should they so choose to and much as Adelaide is defined as a regional centre, there are lots of people who prefer to be far more regional than Adelaide. So as you can see, that's a far broader um, scope than the traditional government co-funding um, programs and I think it actually refle reflects where society is now, what it is expecting of our sector, but also what the opportunity is. As you rightly said, it's very expensive to pop a drill hole in the ground, so you either want to make the most of it, or you want to be absolutely sure that wherever you're putting that little thing in is going to hit right on the mark. So that's a really busy diagram to make it look like we've been doing lots of work, because we have. So we announced this in um, June, government announced this in June, what have we been doing and where are we? So the department has spent quite a few months looking at the governance framework for this. This is a large, complex scope. Um, getting the governance for this is obviously very important to us. Um, this is the bit for you to take notes on how it will work. So 
all the application processes will be online and all the judging will be online. It's a two-stage process. The first is an expression of interest um, process. That's really an opportunity for department to look and make sure there aren't any potential high-risk fatal flaws um, in moving forward to proposal phase. You're like, well, why is that important? Because the funding that, um, that we have is only available for a certain period of time and therefore you know, we want to see it get out there and we want to see it um, actually be used. So there's some of the questions. If you don't make it through the EOI, EOI, EOI phase, don't worry about it. You can apply another time. But if you do uh, make it past this initial stage, you'll be invited to submit a proposal. Obviously, the proposal is fairly detailed. That will include detailed scheduling, your budgeting, the team, the experience of the team, what is the actual program, as well as um, what you expect to get back from that. Once that is done, we have a two, well, it's almost three, actually, phase assessment process. We have an expert panel, which is um, from outside of government. It's a mix of explorers, innovators, uh, people with reputations for social development and uh, community development projects, as well as groundwater uh, specialists from the Department for Environment and Water. They do the first round assessment. The recommendations from that expert panel come back to an intergovernmental um, committee to review. Based out of that, the recommendations will be put up for um, funding approval. Um, the funding agreements and all the lovely contracts that go with that are being developed at the moment. Uh, but that will be coming out soon. And so our current goal, you're like, right, you've got 10 million, when, when can I get my um, piece of that? The goal is to have a single funding round in this financial year, the 2019-2020. Um, past that, the goal is to have, at this stage, uh, two funding rounds a year up until 2022. We may change that. That would only change if there were questions of efficiency or we were finding that there were trends in terms of people applying once a year and we have a... a a wonderful group of expert panels whose time is very valuable. But at the moment, the goal is twice a year. So I guess, I'm sure you've all read through that now, not really, um, but the ADI is open to all mineral commodities. During the assessment though, it's worth reflecting on that we will be giving priority to the minerals that the state has invested in from a strategy perspective, or that are leading, um, leading demand. So. What is that? Copper, gold, uh, uranium, the iron ore, graphite, but also the critical mineral space. And I guess the thing to remember is the ADI is open to explorers, of course, but it's also open to researchers, to collaborators, to innovators. And I think reflecting on, on what we've just heard, I'm kind of hoping that what we think we're going to get in the proposals for the ADI, uh, the opportunity we have with the scope we've given people is that the proposals may come in with things that we were not even aware of or had not considered. This is the true nature of innovation. Uh, thank you very much.